Hello and welcome to another episode of Nerd Paints. If you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe below and feel free to post any comments on any models that you'd like to see painted. But for this episode, we're going to paint the queen from the game Nemesis. And for the queen, I'm going to be using some of the color shift paint similar to what I used in the intruders videos that I posted previously. I'm also going to be using an airbrush for this. Um, the color shift paint goes on a lot quicker using an airbrush, but you could still use a standard brush if you'd like to using the same techniques that I used in one of the intruders videos that I posted previously. Basically, if you're using a brush, you'll want to apply the color shift paint thinly and allowing it to dry between each coat until you get the desired look. I love the color shift paints though on these aliens. I think it really gives it a cool look. And I'll post below where I found these paints. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, I'm going to prime the queen with a black primer. I personally prefer using army painter primer. And I've tried other primers and really like how smooth army painter's primer goes on. You can also view another one of my videos on how I applied primer if you like to. Okay, so after I've primed it with a black primer, I'm going to take Vallejo Glossy Black and I'm going to airbrush this on. Again, you can use a standard brush, but I'm going to use an airbrush here just to apply it quicker. This is really going to use as an undercoat for the color shift paints. I'm using about a 15 PSI to apply this. I also added in a little bit of Vallejo airbrush thinner. Once that's dry, I'm going to take Color Shift Paint Psychotic Illusions by Green Stuff World. Clean out your airbrush in between. And I'm dropping the PSI quite a bit with this so it doesn't splatter. You don't need to thin it out at all. Using about a 15 PSI, and I'm going over almost all of the queen with this. Now, if you're using a regular brush, you're just going to want to apply this thinly until you get the desired look that you want, letting it dry between each coat. A really good tip that I found from Green Stuff World, they have a YouTube video where they use plastic spoons to demonstrate their color shift paints. One suggestion that I would make would be to get some plastic spoons, prime them with a black primer, and then paint over them with a black glossy paint, and then try different shades. Try different shades of color shift paint, and apply different layers to see what shade you're going for and how dark you want this to be. The more layers you add, then the brighter and the more prominent the colors are gonna be. The less layers, then the darker she's gonna be, but it'll have that hint of of color which also looks really cool. I'll add a link below the one of Green Stuff World's videos if you want to take a look and see what I'm talking about with the plastic spoons. Okay and then once that's done I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to take Darth Blue and I'm going to apply this to a lot of the armor and her tail using less of this just to add a little bit more color and variety to her. I think this, along with Psychotic Illusions, gives it a really cool, unique look to her. I really like how these color shift paints turn out and how they just change different colors in different lighting. I'm gonna apply some of this on top of her arms and a lot of her armor. She's, I mean, she's almost all armor. We love on her chest, her shoulders, her arms, her legs. Just kind of working my way around until I get the look that I want. I'm going to apply some of this on the top of her head as well, really avoiding the spikes and some of the other parts of her. As you can see, it goes on pretty quickly with an airbrush, but like I said, if you wanted to, you can use a regular brush. You just want to put it on fairly thin and then letting it dry in between. Next, I'm going to take Necrotic Flesh by Army Painter. And then with this, I'm going to airbrush the spikes coming off of her head. Now with these paints, you are going to want to thin it out a little bit if you're using an airbrush. I'm using Vallejo Airbrush Thinner, and as you stir it up, you want it, you want it to be almost like a milk type consistency. And again, I'm dropping the PSI down quite low, about a 10, between 10 and 15 PSI. And then you use a paper towel here just to, so don't get any overspray on her head. But I'm going to get underneath the spikes here. I'm using a really low PSI just to make sure it doesn't go everywhere. I'm also going to spray the aliens, the little alien babies with this. And again, get the tops of the alien baby that she's, that she's holding. 
I'm also going to spray all the aliens here on the base. You can use a paper towel if you need to so you don't get any back spray or overspray. As you can tell, we haven't had to do a whole lot to make it look like this at this point. I think it's turning out pretty cool so far. Next, I'm going to take Witch Brew by Army Painter and clean out your airbrush in between. And again, I'm adding a little bit of, I added a little bit of Vallejo airbrush thinner. And I'm just going to get the tips of the spikes on our head as well as the tops of the aliens. So I did add the same thing as before. I used Vallejo airbrush thinner to thin that out a little bit and about a 12 PSI. Next, I'm going to take Bay Blonde, do the same thing. I'm going to apply just a little bit here underneath the aliens, uh, maybe on the tops of their heads, just to add some highlights here and there on the aliens. And also use this on the tips of the spikes here to highlight the tips on the spikes and the queen. Cool. This looks pretty good so far. And I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to highlight just a little bit here on the tip of her face here of her mouth. All right, for my next step, I'm gonna take Citadel Thousand Suns Blue, and I'm gonna start using my wet palette. I'm gonna add this to my wet palette, and I'm gonna start painting the base. I'm also gonna take Techless Blue by Citadel, and Ulti and Gray and add these to my palette as well. So I'm gonna take the first one that we added, which is the Thousand Suns Blue, and that's gonna be my base color for the arm here on the hydraulic arm. So I was searching for some different ideas for the base here, and I came across one of the videos, I've gotta give credit to Heroes and Bosses. They did a really cool video on the Queen. You can take a look at that as well as to search for Heroes and Bosses is his channel, and painting the Nemesis Queen. And I really liked his idea of using the yellow and black stripes, um, kind of like caution tape here on the base. So I'm going to do the same thing, um, similar to what he did. Like I said, he did a great job on his as well. And i got to give him credit on what I'm going to do here for the base on mine. Um, similar to his, black and yellow stripes, kind of like a caution tape or caution paint that you would find on a lot of heavy machinery in a factory. I'll add a link to his video down below as well. But as I was searching online, I found that a lot of factories will use blue or yellow for types of machinery similar to this. After that's done, I'm going to take Ulthian Gray and I'm going to paint the other parts of the base. Paint the lid with this as well as the other parts of the this machinery down here. So I'm going to use Ulthian Gray to paint the rest of the machinery down here. The lid, as well as the remaining part of the base, minus the, the main ring around the, the bottom of the base. I'm gonna keep that black. So next I'm gonna take a bad and black and add that to my wet palette. And I'm going to paint the claws of the queen on her hands as well as the claws on her feet. Next, I'm going to do any touch-ups needed on the hydraulic arm or anywhere else that you might see. Next, I'm going to take Necrotic Flesh by Army Painter and add this to my wet palette. Do a little bit of a mix, just a little bit of black mixed in with that. And I'm going to add a little bit of highlights and just different tones to some of the aliens. Maybe behind their heads, on their skin, different parts, just to add a little bit of a variety. As well as the alien here that she's holding in her hand. And then almost pure necrotic flesh and add a little bit of highlights to, to her mouth as well. Maybe just brighten it up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of Ulthian Gray in that, and then I'm going to 
add some highlights to the tips of her spikes. And with a second brush, I'm gonna blend that in here. Okay, so now for my next step, I'm gonna take Moot Green by Citadel and add that to my wet palette, as well as Flash Gets Yellow. I'm gonna take some of the Moot Green and start painting the slime with this. As well as underneath here, at the base of where all the alien babies are, I'm gonna add a lot of Moot Green in there as well, because I'm gonna Add quite a bit of slime onto this, Nurgle's Rot. I found that Moot Green is a really good base color for Nurgle's Rot. So add some of this. Where I'm gonna add, wherever I'm gonna want slime, I'm gonna add some of this on there. Maybe just a little bit underneath here. Underneath the base of, of this hydraulic cover. And underneath the queen's feet, just here and there, add some of this Moot Green. Now, I apologize, but my camera for some reason cut out. Um, but I also mixed in a little bit of the yellow with the moot green. Just add more highlights to some of the slime. Now I'm going to take wiry yellow, and this is where I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing that Heroes and Bosses did, and add the caution paint here to the base of this. Just switching back between the wiry yellow and the black, adding those stripes here at the base, keeping them fairly thick. And after that, I'm going to touch up the base here with the black, with the abaddon black, and just go around the ring of the base. So far, I think this is looking pretty cool. Again, I'd really like to give kudos and thanks to Heroes and Bosses for his idea on the caution paint here at the bottom with the black and yellow. I think it looks pretty cool and it adds a bit of variety and color here. Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to take some Nuln Oil and start adding this into some of the machinery. Give it kind of an oily, dirty look. And this I'm just going straight from the pot here. I'm gonna add some down here at the base as well. Again, just to give it kind of that dirty, oily type look. You want to let the known oil completely dry before you move to the next step. But next, I'm going to take some lead belcher and use a dry brush. I'm going to get most of the paint off using a paper towel, and I'm just going over a lot of the edges here look like, to make it look like the paint and everything's been worn off on the edges. Just really want to kind of rough this up a little bit. Going around the hydraulic arm on the base of the hydraulic press. I'm also gonna take this and very lightly dry brush over the queen's armor. Just wanna bring out some of the edges here and add a little bit of more of a metallic tone along the edges of her armor. I think this will help bring out some of the details here. We go over her tail a little bit. And again, the tops of her arms, went over the tops of her arms. Just a lot of her armor, just lightly go over the edges with this. All right, I think this is looking pretty cool. I really like how this is looking out. So next I'm gonna take Typhus Corrosion and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of rust down here. So just a little bit here in some of the indents and on some of the edges of the machinery down here on the base. The second brush just kind of fan that out a little bit. Just kind of blend that out. 
Maybe a little bit down here along the edges near the warning paint. Don't want to go too overboard with it, but just make sure, it, just give it a little bit of a rust look to it. Next, I'm going to take Riser Rust by Citadel and using a dry brush, I'm going to lightly go over wherever I applied the Typhus Corrosion. I'm going to get the majority of that off using a paper towel. Maybe just a little bit here underneath the lid along the edges. And this looks pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna take Nurgle's Rot and by Citadel, and I'm gonna apply this to a lot of the slime. I'm applying it fairly heavily here in the base here where all the alien babies are. Going over the where the slime is dripping down here. And then on the underside of this alien baby here with some of the Nurgle's Rot. I'm going to add some slime, some of the Nurgle's Rot to her mouth as well. I'm going to give it kind of a slime look here. Maybe just a little bit here as if it's kind of splattered or oozed onto the hydraulic arm. The next I'm going to take Lead Belcher by Citadel, and I'm just going to get some of the tips of her fangs. And just a little bit on some of the claws of the alien babies. Next up I'm going to take Necrotic Flesh. And again, just highlight just a little bit here on the skin of her mouth. This is after the Nurgle's Rot has completely dried, mind you. And then you can go ahead and do any touch-ups. So I'm going to touch up the base again with the bed and black. And just go over and touch up anywhere where you feel it needs to be done. But with that, I think that'll do it. This looks pretty cool. Go ahead and continue any additional highlights or any additional touch-ups that you may need to do. And once you're completely done and it's completely dry, then you're gonna to wanna to seal it with a lacquer. And then once you've sealed it with a lacquer, you'll notice that the color shift paint will turn kind of dull. So what I would do is, if you're using an airbrush, you can use Army Painter Gloss Varnish and spray a little bit of that over onto the queen on her armor, and that'll bring a lot of the color shift paint back out and make it really pop again. Or you can also use Art Coat by Citadel. And you can use, either use a standard brush or use an airbrush to apply that. That'll bring the colors of the color shift paint back out again. And if you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe below. And you can also visit my Patreon page if you'd like to support any future videos or see any posts on any upcoming videos that I'm going to be doing. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some useful tips along the way. As always, thanks again for watching and painting with Nerd Paints.